Hi there, I'm Keith Cauley, and this is Thrive, a Bridgestone America's podcast where we explore our company through compelling conversations with teammates across our organization. More specifically, we've been focused on exploring Bridgestone's vision for the future and our business strategy by connecting dots and showcasing tangible proof points of these efforts in our teammates' day-to-day -day work. The next evolution of that strategy is now taking shape with the formation of Bridgestone West, which brings together the power of our operations and business in the Americas with Europe, Middle East, and Africa that will accelerate business opportunities and expand best practice efficiencies. And there is no one better to help explain the objectives and the importance of what all of that means in this new global structure than Paolo Ferrari, leader of Bridgestone Americas and former leader of Bridgestone EMEA, who now takes on the role of CEO for Bridgestone West. We talked to Paolo about the strength of this global structure and his excitement for the road ahead, but we also take some time to reflect on the road recently traveled to this point, over four years for Paolo as leader of Bridgestone Americas. We hope you enjoy this conversation. So we are joined today by uh, a man who's been here a couple times before. We like to check in every once in a while with our leader here in Bridgestone Americas and now beyond as we continue to grow. I feel like when we talk to you each time, there's a little bit of a nuance to the title, some new, uh, a little addition or a little bit repositioning. And that's part of what we want to talk about today. There's a structural uh, strengthening uh, announced by Bridgestone Corporation. So we'll give you the the high level of the titles and then we'll talk a little bit, Paolo, about good. what it means. But Paolo Ferrari joins us here, Joint Global COO and Chief Digital Transformation Officer of Bridgestone Corporation, uh, also continuing as a group president of BSAM, but now the new CEO title is CEO of Bridgestone West. And we'll talk about that organizational structure and how it works for Bridgestone globally uh, moving forward. Um, but Paolo, thanks for taking the time to come back. Hope it's been a good year. Well, thank you for having me. And uh, before you ask me all the questions, I have a question for you. Oh, sure. How many podcasts have you done so far? This is, hey, I actually was looking at some stuff earlier today. This is number 52, I believe. Wow. Uh, over the course of now three years, which uh, we're continuing to roll on. Um, only about 30 of those have been in the studio. So really feeling like home now in the studio. Very proud of it. I think you're yeah. doing a great job. And well, we started you. this together, I guess, in exactly. 2021. You were episode one. That is true. <laughs> great, great journey. Congratulations. <laughs> no, thank you. And and what ground we've covered in that time, right? We've seen the North Star tra uh, strategy take shape. Uh, we have seen now the introduction of the Bridgestone E8 commitment, um, and now the continued evolution of our global management structure taking place with our global CEO, Shu Ishibashi-san, uh, and Bridgestone Corporation. So uh, it was in October, some important uh, announcements made by our global CEO around this new structure. So the formation of two regions, Bridgestone West, Bridgestone East reporting up globally. Uh, I think a lot of our teammates have now started to learn a little bit about how this will take shape. But from your point of view, Paolo, I mean, what are the drivers of a decision like this? When you, uh, This is obviously something that had planning for several months, um, but what are the drivers and then the objectives of what this change is supposed to deliver? Sure. Well, first of all, um, the East and West concepts mm -hmm. are not completely new. Right. As you know, uh, I guess a little over a year ago, uh, already we had announced two joint global COOs uh, managing or, or actually overseeing at mm -hmm. the time uh, the West and the East. So this, um, I would say, is a, is, a, is, a, uh, is a new development, but not completely new in a way because sure. it starts from the base of about a year ago. And uh, the spirit is similar in a way because, of course, the East and the West uh, have some different in business cultures, right. uh, have differences in um, pace of innovation, have differences that we need to be mindful of. And therefore, at the time, uh, our global CEO, Shibashi San, decided it was worth to begin to focus on these two regions in a way independently, of course, within the global vision and strategy that we have developed over the last uh, several years. Mm -hmm. So I think this takes it to the next level. Uh, the next level in terms of uh, accountability, of ownership, uh, continue to be closer to our customers and to our markets uh, in a way they deserve to be because they are different uh, from each other. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, yeah, so I think this new organization will allow us to drive our business even uh, in a stronger way with more accountability, again, more ownership. And uh, like uh, Ishibashi and I like to say, to uh, aggressively deliver results, execute and deliver results, which yeah. is something that's very, very important. And I think that also it takes the synergies work that we have done over the last year to the next level. I have to say I'm extremely 
happy and proud of how the team has worked on this on the West synergies over the last uh, little over a year. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, I gave some guidance on some of the areas that we should have worked on and uh, how we should have worked by the leaders and the teams just took that to the next level proactively, found so many other areas that we could work on and deliver efficiency, effectiveness in the way we manage our business. And of course, this new organization will take it to the next level. So very happy with where we are. And I do believe that as we set up our MVP 24, this organization will allow us to deliver results even better. Yeah, our midterm business plan coming into the new next kind of three-year period. Uh, for those who, who maybe need that extra clarification, when we talk about West versus East, so West is Americas and the Europe kind of Middle East, Africa region. That's right. East is Japan, Asia Pacific in terms of how we structure that. That's right. And then within the West, of course, we have also created Bridge to Mobility Solutions mm -hmm. already a year ago. They yeah. were a little bit ahead of their time and also now creating also the West Retail, uh, which is another area of business with clearly defined perimeter. Yeah, couple of things I have on my topic list to <laughs> talk about here indeed. I do want to touch on what, what you kind of in, uh, initially said, which was this isn't a, an entirely new concept. You're proud of the work that teams have been doing because we have been focused on Western synergies between the Americas and between the Europe, Middle East, Africa uh, group over the last 12 to 15 months. What maybe are some of those uh, proof points of positive momentum or maybe some of the areas we saw those opportunities and started working over the last year? Yeah, so uh, I think this podcast is too short uh, <laughs> to share all the various uh, areas that we have uh, worked on. But I think they're all within a few, I would say, general concepts. One is clearly to, uh, to leverage um, each other's best practices, right? Mm -hmm. There are certain areas where we're stronger in Europe, other where we're stronger in the U.S., uh, I think retail is a good example, right? Where, of course, we have a very, very uh, strong retail operations here. And in Europe, certain pockets are good and other needs to be improved. So leverage on each other's best practices in each other's competence. There are certain competence that we have in Europe, uh, specifically maybe around some of the winter attire development, for instance, is another in the U.S., where there's, of course, a big focus on all season. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's around converging platforms. I like the concept of platforms. Uh, we have worked on uh, the employer value proposition in BSAM that could also be extended to, to Europe. We worked on the free to be platform, mm -hmm. another great uh, concept around our DNI journey, uh, but also a platform around technology platforms. Yeah. Uh, of course, when it comes to the work that we begin to do on product lifecycle management, of course, converging is very important to make sure that we deploy our resources in an efficient way. Uh, the cloud. I mean, we have actually having, in this case, not just the West, but a global yeah. cloud agreement. So really the ability to put together our overall consumption, uh, also to manage and to negotiate better contracts. Scale, and in a way, cloud is also related to scale, but also procurement in general. Sure. How can we actually put together what is now combined, Keith, uh, <laughs> billions and billions of purchases in, 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 sure. in, across the business. So really leverage the scale. So competence, best practices, platform convergence and scale is really where we have worked on across truly the businesses, across the, the supporting functions, and just across all of the areas. Great, great work, great progress. And of course, we're putting all of that progress into our MVP, Midterms Business Plan 24, because there's a lot also money behind it. Yeah. No, I, I like that concept of w when people hear the word platforms, they think maybe of digital systems or some kind of integrated cloud or beyond. But the reality that we have a lot of shared platforms in terms of our cultural initiatives within Bridgestone, right? DE&I, as you talked about, our diversity, equity, and inclusion, employee value prop. There's a lot of that can be shared across Absolutely. the West. For sure. Maybe another point that sure. I, I haven't mentioned that I think is very important um, within the West. So I'm a big fan of the concept of the economy of ecosystems, yeah. which are being developed, as you know, in different industries. And uh, our ecosystem around mobility is, is super important. And um, I think we have connected well as West with this ecosystem over the last uh, few years. A lot of the companies that we are connected to are headquartered in the West, uh, some in Europe, some in the US. Of course, there are other in Asia Pacific as well. But when it comes to the mobility ecosystem, uh, it was important for us to, to lead that from the West point of view. So if I think about the work that we have done with uh, AWS and Microsoft on the cloud, mm -hmm. the work that, of course, we are doing with our uh, OEMs, original equipment manufacturers in the West, but also the emerging OEMs from yeah. Tesla to Fisker to Rivian. Uh, if I think about the work that we have done with our global fleet companies, whether it's Amazon, whether it's FedEx, UPS. So that's an ecosystem. Yeah. Technology, transportation, fleet, of course, parts all coming together. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that is a, 
a sort of an industry synergies that the West is, the West is leading really, really well. Yeah, well, I take the opportunity where I can. We've done 50 or so podcast episodes. We've done some with AWS and Microsoft from CES last year. Yeah, I remember understanding that. Understanding the shared vision kind of on, on the digital moves and the, and the mobility future. Uh, we've talked about fleets and, and some of the future in there and, and emerging OEs as well, the opportunities that exist. So encourage everybody to go get some more background <laughs> on those areas that we've been moving. Um, you did talk about uh, two areas that are now under Bridgestone West, uh, the first being Bridgestone Mobility Solutions uh, that we've put some uh, some growth into over the last year and some organization. Um, part of this announcement is that Scott Damon, who we've had on the podcast before, most recently the Chief Operating Officer of Bridgestone Americas, will be taking over as Group President for Bridgestone Mobility Solutions, which we'll refer to as BMS. Um, let's start there, but what is our focus with BMS and how will it play? play kind of into this Bridgestone West strategy yeah. moving forward? So in the uh, conversation we just had about West Energy, I didn't mm -hmm. mention BMS, but in a way BMS was our biggest effort and step forward in terms of synergies within a business. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, it was ahead of its time. Uh, we created this cross SBU mm -hmm. uh, unit uh, called Bridgestone Mobility Solutions. And even just in the last year, we worked really well together into uh, assessing uh, the complementary of the platforms, even in this case, when it comes to Azuga, for instance, or Web3 solutions. Uh, and of course, working together to converge on, on the hardware, converge on some of the software solutions, or leveraging each other to make sure that we serve the different segments in the different country in the best possible way. Yeah. We have worked very hard within the Retread business. Of course, Retread is another area where BSAM is super strong. I mean, Retread in the US is one of our most successful businesses. It's actually one of our first service solutions business that Bridgestone engaged in with the acquisition in 2007. Mm -hmm. And Europe is struggling a little bit. So of course, uh, we actually also had uh, some, some folks and some great talent from, from the US moving to Europe and, and helping Europe to take Retread to the next level because Retread is a key strategic platform for us as a group, yeah. as a sustainable solutions company. So all of that worked uh, in a way was one of the biggest work that we've done around synergies within a business. And now, of course, that journey will continue under, Scott, under Scott's leadership. And of course, Scott is a great leader for this new phase of the company because we're talking about the truly the deployment of our integrated platforms to, to major fleets in the U.S. and Europe to, to really, uh, I would say, make the customer success come to life with the deployment of fleet care. And yeah. as you know, Scott is a, a great, great experience around retread, yep. great experience in the overall commercial and fleet business. So I think as we look forward, there are some, some established businesses that need to continue to be successful and grow. Retread is one of them. Again, continue to be very successful in the U.S. and, of course, turn positive in, uh, in Europe. The fleet management solutions company that we have purchased, mm -hmm. we consider them established businesses yeah. compared to our other ventures. Of course, they are relatively young, especially Azuga, but they're growing really, really well. And they need to continue to grow as, as companies themselves because they have their own structure, they have their own go-to-market, and they are growing uh, double-digit or high single digit or double digit for web solutions. Mm -hmm. And they're still growing 30 to 40% when it comes to Azuga that is in a different stage. So yeah. those businesses need to continue to grow as they are. Firestone Air Ride, another great yeah. business we didn't talk enough about, a great opportunity for growth. It's an established business, but of course with new segments like the whole EV, uh, yeah. I would say evolution that uh, uh, really values our product. So I think those businesses need to continue to grow and they will, they're well established. And the newer businesses like the advanced tire models, for instance, mm -hmm. it's an area that is very important to us. So this is basically the digital version of our product and all the solutions that we can actually deploy to customers thanks to access to data, access to driver's data, to vehicle's data. And that's something that is a bit more of a startup for us, but being deployed quite fast, especially in the car park and truck park that we own within the telematics platform. So mm -hmm. some of these areas need to accelerate to the next stage of scaling because they are still relatively in startup mode. Sure. And then we have fleet care. <laughs> fleet care puts it all together. I don't know if we had a podcast specifically Not on fleet yet, care. No, we've we been should. building towards, yes. But we're really talking about putting together our tire platforms, our retread platforms, our telematics platform, and our service platform. This is what fleet care is all about. Going to major fleet or small or medium fleet and say, well, come with us because we have all of this suite of solutions for your fleet management that really makes a huge difference in terms of the uptime, the efficiency, safety, and sustainability for fleet. 
So fleet care specifically in North America is going to be a key element of our MBP 24. And, uh, and I think we have the perfect setup to make it happen. Yeah, steadily building. I know uh, the Consumer Electronics Show, CES, we mentioned before, will be there again in, in 2024. That's been a growing focus, a very digital world, a lot of big movers in that digital transformation space. But that's where the ecosystem comes yeah, together. exactly. Because what did I mention? I mentioned you know, our fleet management platform, our entire platform, they are on the cloud. And we happen to do business with AWS and Microsoft. We're yep. connected to them. These guys do business with the OEMs. They do business with the big fleet companies. We do, of course, big business with the FedEx, yep. the UPS, and the Penske's of the world. There you have it. We are plugged into the ecosystem kit. We were not plugged the way we are uh, five or six years ago. Yep. And I think the, the M&A that we did uh, and simply the activity by the team we're not just part of that ecosystem. We're actually, we're the glue of that ecosystem to a certain extent. Yeah. You talk about the, the Bridgestone 3.0 vision of sustainable solutions where we've been moving going forward. The idea of core tire product, and we'll talk about core tire in just a moment, but that still stays at our base. But looking at these growth opportunities in that, the digital ecosystem Absolutely. as we grow. Um, one uh, additional item that you mentioned in this uh, Bridgestone West announcement is retail. Yep. And you noted that we have the, the big strong and uh, what dating back almost 100 years is the, the retail network here in the United States. Um, there's There are pockets of retail that are strong in Europe, um, but now we're bringing both of this together as Bridgestone West. Uh, Craig Schneider, who's most recently been our BSAM uh, chief strategy officer, will be leading as group president of West Retail. Retail. Similar question to BMS. What is the, I guess, the vision, the strategy behind having a sure. West retail moving forward? So first I would say that uh, we are more and more considered, not just a tire company, mm -hmm. but a mobility solutions company. Actually, one of the analysts report called us a mobility technology company, yeah. which is uh, great news. So they begin to see what we're doing. Uh, but I think one of the assets that is mostly undervalued or, or uh, underestimated is our retail retail yeah. network, a retail company, not just a retail network, the company itself is a company. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to do a better job telling the story to the market because it's a hugely valuable asset for, for customers, uh, for our fleet customers, and, 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 uh, and, and in the deployment of our Bridgestone 3.0 strategy as a whole. BSR also, Firestone Complete Auto Care, Bridgestone Retail Operations, have done really well in the last uh, four years. Yeah. Uh, really growing steadily, increasing margins. Uh, we have also increased our investments in, in this retail uh, business, and it really becoming a best practice, uh, especially in the last four or five years where we have really stepped up also management, uh, stepped up platforms again, constant sure. platforms, new services, and the focus on premium, the focus on mix, the focus on HRD, the focus on the right service uh, tire mix. And I think we need to make sure that that uh, competence and that best practice needs to be, of course, transferred also to some of the assets in Europe. In Europe, we have a few assets that are, that are doing well. Expedia in France is a good example. Uh, a few other assets that we have in Germany doing relatively well. Others are really suffering, suffering big time. So here we are being able to leverage uh, the great work really going back to operational excellence mm. in BSRO, transfer to us from European assets and making sure that we also take those to the same level. So overall, the goal in MPP 24 is really to continue to grow uh, Firestone Complete Auto Care to the pace that it's been growing in the last few years, continue to add uh, more services to service uh, the new mobility ecosystem mm -hmm. in a way, including fleets, and also making sure that the Europe European operations go to the same level, and therefore we can talk about really a comprehensive retail uh, operations across the West uh, that the markets will continue to notice. Yeah, and you got we we talk about it on some of our other conversations, right? The idea of the ecosystem of servicing cars is going to continue to evolve with more EVs coming to market. How do we make sure that our ecosystem mm -hmm. and our infrastructure is able to support that mobility of the future, continuing to evolve uh, retail uh, in that sense? And we've seen mobile services, other uh, aspects of that uh, digital kind of connectivity. But that's something yeah. I'm glad you mentioned it because it's something I'm, I'm proud of also because uh, you know, time flies, and it's <laughs> been you know years uh, from the beginning of our journey as a sustainable solutions company. Mm -hmm. I think we we deployed our capital well, uh, because of course we continue to invest in our core tire business. The vast majority of our investments go there. Mm -hmm. We made tactical M and A here and there, but relevant company, fleet management solutions company. We have played the optionality game in mobile, for instance, mm -hmm. by 
making minority investments as well as investing in our own startup and basically creating the condition for us to be a truly relevant player in the fleet care business. Yeah. Uh, and I say this with pride because a lot of companies that go through transformations, they, they play the optionality game even more aggressively than we do, um, but end up also losing a lot of money, yeah. right? And, and, and I think we, we've, um, we missed very few beats in a way in yeah. the deployment of our capital. And today we are in this position because uh, uh, we, we played the organic growth wisely, the inorganic M&A growth wisely, but also the seed capital here and there in VCs or in startup that, uh, that we're leveraging all together. So. Yeah. Well, I, you know, we'll close this kind of uh, West structure and the conversation of the org on core tire, uh, because the, the reality is we talk about BMS and this growth in solutions. We talk about strengthening retail as part of that whole network of fleet care. Uh, but we continue to invest and, and double down on the core tire business, which continues to be the base. We've introduced Enlighten. We talk about material circularity and the new materials that are coming as part of that strategy. We're also just not, you know, sitting back on our, on our core tire expertise. We're continuing to advance that forward as well. How do you see that continue to be uh, obviously an important and critical part of the future on all the other things we just talked yeah. about? You know, that every time that I shared, you know, in a town hall or anywhere else are A, B, C, Helix, mm -hmm. right? A, B, and C. That A, which is the core tire business, where we very simply say we produce and sell tires, is the biggest one. <laughs> it's still the biggest and is the base of that A, B, C because, because it is the vast majority of our business and the capital that we deployed. But even in that area, we need to make sure that we stay ahead of the technology curve if we focus on premium. So some kind of commoditization is happening as we speak, and we see it coming. But our investment in light and technology, which is both R&D stack for the tires as well as manufacturing mm -hmm. equipment to produce those sophisticated tires, is the way that we're gonna keep that edge. And when we talk about edge, it means premium, it means technology edge, and eventually it means profit and profitability. So our, our business is profitable, it has been profitable, and it will continue to be profitable if we continue to, to invest in technology. I think you heard me saying this before, you know, uh, a few years ago and still today, premium and technology and profit in tires were about HRD, mm -hmm. higher in diameters. And by the, the, by, by the way, at the time it was 17 inches and above. Today is 18 inches and above. Yeah. But now we talk about ultra HRD, 20 inches and above. Gets but then we talk about enlightened technology, which means also uh, not just continue to improve our core I would say traditional feature of the performance of a tire, but also the sustainability component, which is around rolling resistance, which is about wear, and also about material circularity number, exactly as you said. So Enlighten is allowing us to move up continuously in the premium, in a way, development, which means staying ahead of the curve and continue to be successful. It's a lot of capital that we're deploying, but we see that the return is still good because, of course, we're able to, to price up and we're able to win customers um, with that. So, so enlightened technology on core tire, both consumer and commercial, and I would say even in the OR world around master core, but let's talk about consumer and commercial. And fleet care as a full suite of solutions for fleet, these are the two platforms really that will allow us to continue to keep an edge when it comes to our core business in tires. There you go. Well, one more question, maybe before we move beyond kind of the recent Bridgestone West and the, the org structure and, and the global management structure, uh, adding the new role of Chief Digital Transformation Officer for Bridgestone Global. We've had some some questions as that's come about. What does that role entail? What is your uh, focus, I guess, from that role uh, on the global point of view? So what can you share about how this will be added to your uh, plate and where you what are you doing with this? I smile because I think it's the most uh, complex acronym of any <laughs> title that I've had ever, ever had in my life. Um, the CDXO, I think, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I would say the following that um, obviously uh, in all of these this, uh, different roles and everything, I need to begin to set priorities. And I think even within the, let's call it this digital and IT world, priority is going to be the West, accelerating the platform convergence and all, all the things that we could do within the West. But there are a few things global that I think we can focus on. Uh, and I want to manage my expectations, everybody has expectations, give it everything that is going on. I think that um, from a global IT point of view, uh, we can do what we have done well in the West, which is align, for instance, on a global um, IT architecture. Uh, that's very important because then you can have the different region deploying you know, 
again, uh, IT platforms or solutions platform, other things that may be independent and um, the right fit for that market, but if they are designed with having in mind the enterprise IT architecture, then I think we have some templates that we can converge to and I think is very important. So I think aligning on a global enterprise architecture is, is one thing that we will continue to work on. Uh, the other one is cloud. In a way, we're already there, but continue to deploy our cloud strategy and do a very thoughtful migration that have, of course, security in mind as well as mm -hmm. the efficiency that we want to go after uh, with the cloud strategy as well as the acceleration of our solutions business. Um, and, uh, and the other point that we probably should have mentioned as maybe first or second is, <laughs> is security, cybersecurity. Sure. And as you know, we, we, we know the subject very, very well, yeah. uh, unfortunately. Uh, I think thanks to Terrence's leadership and Tom Corridor's leadership, we have done great progress, certainly within the West, how do, and, and partially also globally, but how do we make sure that we truly accelerate the global cybersecurity uh, journey uh, so that we're gonna be even more protected in a way and resilient moving forward. So architecture, uh, cloud, cybersecurity, those are some of the topics that I think we can do globally uh, of course, within the West, it's a different story because within the West is all of that and more. It's around convergence on on on, uh, on, on marketing platforms, so convergence sure. on. Uh, I think I mentioned before about PLM, product lifecycle management. Mm -hmm. How do we make sure that we also converge in the West? So, I think we have a full blown roadmap in the West, and I think we can pick a few key items for globally that I think will will go a long way. Start to grow. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've we've had Tom Corden on, we've had Taryn yep. Rodabar, our CIO on uh, cybersecurity, obviously a topic that we've discussed before. I like what we're keeping finding all these other touchbacks to the previous conversations that I'll continue yeah, to Well, plug. it shows consistency <laughs> in our strategy. We're it's not trying. a minor yes. thing. <laughs> we're building it out, yes. Um, you mentioned also kind of time flies, right? Since Bridgestone 3.0 was introduced, uh, we're approaching now, I think January will be four years, January of 24, uh, depending on when you're listening to this, will be four years for you as a leader of BSAM, uh, as that role has now evolved a little little bit um but a lot has happened between, yeah. <laughs> since then right you obviously covid but a continued uh, evolution of our of our strategy as it takes shape and strength the ea commitment like we said we've talked here now about enlighten uh the western synergy structure uh it's a long list but what uh, i guess as you reflect what have you learned about yourself what do you think back on in this period that you take with you as you continue to lead now in this next step into the future yeah, so the fact that I haven't really sat down and reflected yet on it uh, is <laughs> we both, both, both good and bad in a sense that I think it's good because it shows that we, uh, we're not at the end of a cycle. Sure. In a way, we just continue to, to put things on the table and to invest in new things, and we're very, very dynamic. I'm sure that many of the team is that are watching this are maybe too dynamic. <laughs> maybe we have too much going on. So I haven't really had that time to reflect, to be honest with you. But at a high level... Yes, a lot has gone on. And then we keep on saying, of course, we went through COVID, we went through cyber, but on a much more positive note, uh, we deployed a new strategy, uh, a new vision and a new strategy, globally aligned. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, disposed companies and acquired companies, so we have partially reshaped our portfolio. Uh, we have uh, introduced new businesses. We have uh, invested in VCs. We have invested in minorities, like I was saying before. Mm -hmm. Um, and everything very much consistent and aligned with the strategy. So, so we've done so much. Uh, and honestly, I think it's, it's one of the reasons why I think we've done well also financially in the last, uh, in the last few years. I mean, if I look at the financials in 2022, because the full year that we have before we close 23 compared to 19 and 18, so pre-COVID, we've done, we've done well. So I'm very, my, my first reaction is very proud uh, of what we have done. Uh, maybe a little tired, uh, and I'm sure that's that's true for for many of us. And hopefully, 24 will will set up with the new organization also a slightly different rhythm. Um, but also a reflection that I am personally a lot more resilient than I thought. I thought I was, but I think what we went through. I think our team is a lot more resilient than I thought, and I think we should all be very proud of it. Um, I reflect on the fact that the reason why we've been resilient is that we have been we've been a good culture. I think that the team, I think a lot of the cultural characteristics that we have talked about are really, really true. They're not just up on a wall for us or, or on a slide. Uh, in terms of the caring, in terms of the, the teamwork, in terms of the resilience, which is one of them. 
Um, and I think we've done that because we've communicated a lot. I think communication has been a big part of the last uh, four years, keeping teammates yeah. engaged. Uh, so I guess for me, the value of putting really culture first, the teammates first, uh, I think everybody says that. I think that there's not a CEO that doesn't say that. I think you need to assess whether it's real. Uh, so I think it's real. Uh, of course, uh, who am I to say the feedback should come from the teammates. But if I look at the engagement survey that we did just a year ago and the one that we literally just did, and I saw a preview literally a couple of days ago, um, I think the team is giving us good feedback. So, yeah, it's been an incredible journey, but a lot more, a lot more to come. Yeah, well, I, I think it's part of when you talk internally and talk to our teams. We always talk about it. It's an exciting time to be part of Bridgestone. This is planning for the future. It's not. It's not a short sprint. It's going to take years on years to build and grow and strengthen. Um, but to be able to continually try to build that out, there are exciting things. It may be a lot of things, but there are exciting things happening to lead in the future of mobility. But also because I think what we do well is, you know, I think we care about the quarter. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, and I think the pressure is on. But when we say that we're really here for the long term, it's true. And I think our investments and our stance and our vision speak to that because we're investing truly for, for the future. So yeah. I think we have a good short-term determination with a very solid mid-long-term view. Yeah. Well, as we wrap up our time here, we're, we, you said you haven't taken a ton of time to reflect on a four-year run at this point. But we're, we're, we're recording this as we get to the end of a year. We're going to be kicking off 2024. That's, as we talked about, also the start of a new three-year midterm business plan. Uh, this is where a lot of people always maybe reflect but also look ahead. So I think question for you as we leave is, what are you looking at in the new year from something that maybe you're watching very closely that is a challenge that we want to keep an eye on, but also what are you excited about yeah. as we enter 24? So uh, first and foremost, for sure, is, is making sure that the new organization gets going well sure. uh, into 2024. Uh, kind of like a year ago for the West Synergies, I am just so pleased with how the leaders are stepping in already. Of course, the organization is, is formally in place from January 1st, mm -hmm. but I think everybody's already working towards that really, really well. And the goal is to make sure that, you know, team of course understand why we're doing this. Uh, then of course we need to go a couple of levels down, down in terms of details of how exactly everything is gonna work and hopefully understand that this is really for the better, uh, for the better, not just on our ability to execute our, our strategy, but also in overall, I would say, quality of work and overall rhythm. So that's clearly a priority in the next, on it as we speak in the next days and weeks and as we go into, into Q1. The other point I would make is that, uh, so all in all, 23 has been a tough year, but within economic conditions that have been okay, 24 looks, it probably the headwinds will be, will be stronger. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think we need to get ready for it. Of course, the organization will be ready for it. Uh, that's one of the reasons why, why we did it. And, um, and what I'll be looking for is to make sure that we deploy a few key elements of our strategy that will, be, will make us successful in any market condition. One is Enlighten, as we discussed. The other one is Fleet Care, as we discussed. The one we haven't talked about is BCMA, so yep. Bridgestone Commodality Modularity, which is our ability to manage our plans in a way that will allow us to support all of this complexity, which eventually will bring profit. So, yeah, these are some of these organizations for sure, Enlighten, Fleetcare, BCMA. As we go into a year, 24, that will not be easy, but in an MVP, uh, they will be good. Uh, I think the market will rebound at one point, especially the commercial market that has been tough. Uh, so is it going to rebound in 24? Don't know, maybe later part of 24, but 25, 26. And midterm, to your point earlier, Keith, our industry is in a good shape. Our core target business will continue to grow. Miles driven will continue to go up. Mm -hmm. the, the fleet demand is a good thing for us uh, because the more they go out and put publish RFPs or requests for, you know, for, for, uh, uh, for projects and... Um, what they ask is very similar to what we have built over the last few years. So I think, again, there will be bumps in the roads, there will be economic shocks here and there, but midterm, we're in a very good place, both as an industry and as a company. Yeah. Talking about that consistency, right? Able to be able to weather whatever the volatility is out there, but that's part of what 
the strategy that we've set forth is supposed to be able to do. And we're seeing it come to action. I will be honest, as much as I'm like, we're plugging these old podcasts that we've explained, uh, marking down, we have not done one on BCMA. We'll have to put it on the list. I will be transparent. That is a gap that we need to discuss. Um, so we'll look to do that in the new year as well. But uh, Paolo, thanks so much for taking some time. I know you're, you're running around. You got a lot going on as we get to the close of this year, um, but appreciate taking the time to further dig into some of these big announcements. And again, stay the consistency in our strategy so teammates Absolutely. know what's going on. Well, I enjoy it. Thank you for having me and congratulations on the great success of Thrive. Uh, thank you so much. Hopefully you can indeed see a lot of connection and consistency from this conversation with Paolo to previous episodes as we now close three years and six seasons of the Thrive Podcast. More than 50 episodes available to help you learn about some of these big overarching topics, as well as how different areas of our company and our Bridgestone culture are helping bring our vision to life. Remember, you can listen to any of these other episodes wherever it is you listen to podcasts, and you can also watch episodes on our Bridgestone America's YouTube page. Wherever it is that you hear us, feel free to give us a rating or a review. Tell us how we're doing, or you can always send a question, episode idea, or feedback via email to thrivepodcast at bfusa.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Keith Cauley, telling you to keep on keeping on, and remember that at Bridgestone, today, tomorrow, together, we thrive. Be good, everybody.